Wow, we got a fancy new intro. We got new digs. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. Year 13 of the Bison video blog brought to you by Gate City Bank from our new studios here at WDAY with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. Welcome to 2023. We got some a little bit of new everything here. Well, do you remember when we first started I doing do. this? I do, yes. When streaming on the internet was just sort <laughs> yeah. of a novelty thing, but you, you never really saw it because Who knew? it was too slow and it just took up too much stuff. Stuff. And here we are. Yeah. We continue to grow yeah. this. And Gate City Bank's along for another, yep, another, another year ride. on this ride, and let's go. Yeah, we're going to be doing this each and every Monday. And on Wednesdays, live on TV, we're going to be on at 1030 on WDAY Extra every Wednesday all year long. It's not just during football season, not basketball. We're going to be with you uh, 12 months of the year. So saddle up. Here we go, huh? I'm always ready, Dom. <laughs> I mean, this time of the year, and again, we see that school started this yep. week for college, and we've been out at practice here and there with Bison football, and we'll obviously get into the details of, of NDSU and, and what we think of this season, but it just gives you a different vibe when it comes to this community, and, and, and it's the changing of the seasons, yep. right? and here we go. Well, and here we go with some news on the day of as we record this that the Fargo Dome presented today with an expansion plan uh, with a convention center attached to it. I know this is a story you've been working on seemingly for about a decade. Give us the lowdown and how this is going to affect Bison football. Well, right, and these plants first started surface, I believe, in 2014. I saw <laughs> drawings of this, yeah. and you wonder whenever this would come to fruition. But how will it affect Bison football? Well, it's a different, it's a different era in in the fan experience. Yep. You know, this this. Arena was opened up to Bison football in 1993. It's not 1993 no. anymore. It's 2024. You need different areas. You need bars. You need restaurants. You need club levels. You need social areas. Yep. You know, the, the days of the fan of just grabbing a ticket and going sitting at your seat are over. I mean, yep. yes, people yep. still do that. I'm yep. not saying everybody. Correct. But there's just more of a, of a variety of entertainment now associated with stadiums. U.S. Bank Stadium, where NDSU will be yeah. in a couple of weeks. I mean, if you haven't been there, go there, walk around, go all the different bars and restaurants and, and clubs, and it's really kind of a cool thing, and it's different. Just the concourse itself, at, at yeah. when U.S. Bank, you can walk around, and you can literally see the, the, the game everywhere. That's part of this expanded concourse, which I know is everyone's happy about that. More bathroom access, which, again, I think people are excited about. For us, a new press box as well. Bathroom access there, I think we're, we're excited about. This is not going to be... Immediate. This is going to be a little bit, not till after the 2024 season is when things are really going to start. If this passes, yeah, I, I, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here. Out there right. too. It's, a, it's going to be funded three ways a quarter cent sales tax, which Fargo voters have to approve, Proof. 30 million from the reserve fund, which is already there, of 41 million, yep. and then a 3% uh, a, a lodging tax, which again, the voters have to approve. It's a 60% threshold, correct? That it has to get a through. Super majority. Now. And when the Fargo Dome was first voted on yep. in, I believe, 88 or 89, it only needed a majority, although it did approve by a super majority yeah. of over 60%. And so that's that they'll need again. And again, I mean, let, let's well, not editorialize this, but well, you can. I think it's kind of Well, overdue. I mean, the Fargo Dome has <laughs> paid itself over right. in, in thousands of different ways. And uh, I can rubber stamp that when it should happen. I think we've addressed this 100 times over. We're going to when the season gets started on Bison Game Day about why the attendance the way it is. I think this can... This can help in that matter. I really believe that. Well, of course it can help yeah. because, again, uh, you look at the, the modern stadiums and, and even Newman Outdoor Field yep. that was built in 1997. Well, you can walk around and watch the game with different, uh, you know, bar, I'm going to say bars, but different stands and stuff like yep. that and different options for, for food and beverage. You need options these days. And so, again, I mean, the Fargo Dome was great when it opened, but like everything yeah. else, it gets outdated, and it is outdated in my opinion. Yeah. It has been, and this would be a major step towards modernizing because from what Rob Soblick, the executive director of the Fargo Dome, told you that the, there was the choice of either expanding or adding the amenities. The expansion of seats, Jeff, I mean, Rob said over $140 million if they wanted to add five to 10,000 more seats into the dome. Yeah, it just doesn't seem that's feasible, and it's not feasible yeah. either. It's a and, big brick building. And really, yeah. you can ask the question, is it needed? Right. I mean, is it needed? At I don't this, think at it's this needed. this moment, it's not. Even no. if NDSU goes FBS yeah. down, even if they if they somehow get an invite to the Mountain West or the American, 19,000 seats yeah. is enough. It is. Yeah. It's 19,000 seats. If NDSU were in the Mountain West last year, they'd be right around the middle of attendance. Yeah. And so that yeah. and that's fine. That's yeah. all you need. 
Well, let's transition out on the field. As we sit here, we're recording this. We're 11 days out from the season opener, and the Bison are dealing with, with injuries like it was a constant theme of 2022. It's happened in 2023. We were out of practice yesterday. We see uh, a guy on a scooter. It ends up being Barnesville native Hunter Zenzen, who transferred into the program in January. Uh, it's a plantar fasciitis injury, which is the worst injury you can have. You as a runner can attest to that. You almost rather have a broken foot than having something to do uh, with a, a list frank injury that he's got to deal with, and he's going to miss the entire season. Guy was transitioning from linebacker to defensive end. Yeah, list frank is, is a pretty serious deal, and it, it can put you, it'll put him out several months yes. if not. I mean, this is not a six weeks deal, six week deal. And so now, unfortunate for the young man, I think he had a new lease on life moving from yep. Iowa State to here and, and looking forward to making a contribution on the field. And this is going to put a little more importance now on Dylan Hendricks yep. and, the, and the development that he's going to have to make and take that extra step this year. In my opinion, I think Dylan Hendricks is prime for a great year. He was really good at the end of last year. Yeah. He started to come on. He didn't get into action until about Indiana State, middle part of the season. I thought at the end of last year, specifically Samford Incarnate Word, he was really good. I think Kelton McCaslin, Toby Anena, two Ropes. young defensive yeah. ends that are redshirt freshmen, they're going to get asked to be thrown into the fire because Zenzen was going to – I don't know if he was going to start, Jeff, but he was going to have a ton of reps. He was going to play a lot. He certainly was going to get a shot yeah. right away. But also, let's look at LaShaka Ropes. Yep, LaShaka Ropes. Here's a guy who's been in the yep. program now a while, and I think he hasn't really elevated his status like they maybe thought he'd mm. hoped at this point. But here again, okay, what is he, third or fourth year now? Yep. It's, it's time. I yep. mean, either at this point in your career – if you're not an impact player, you may not never be. Now they have Jake Cava back for his sixth yep. year and also Cole Menz, who was on the All-Valley uh, Newcomer of the Year uh, team last season. Those are two guys to look at as well. I mean, they have guys, but you and I have talked about this. Since Derek Tuska left, Braden Thomas filled that role in 2021. They don't have that unstoppable guy on the edge. And I'm not, I don't know if Zenzen was going to be that guy either, but they need to have that if they want to be a suffocating defense. And I'll, I'll go back to Greg Menard, just yep. that – that, ins yep. that, that consistent pass rusher that yep. the, the other team with their left tackles always worried about this guy coming around the yep. end and, and uh, such a consistent quarterback sack threat. Now, I mean, you look at last year, yeah, there were some there were some moments. Yeah. I mean, there were some moments that the defensive line played Spencer pretty Wagey well. Spencer Wagey was, yeah, had Wagey, moments last yeah, year. Yeah, Wagey yep. had some good moments. But again, you need that, that, that Tuska-like yeah. stuff where a guy like the two to three sack game, yep. we haven't seen no. that. Not since basically since Thomas was here two yeah. years ago. Uh, we'll get into Eastern Washington next week. I know we did our scheduled preview on our on our Bison preview show on WDAY uh, on Sunday. I wanted to look at the schedule again because, as mentioned, we're going to get into the Eagles. The non-conference is where I wanted to focus on because we Maine is picked at the bottom half of its league. Central Arkansas is at the top part. But when you look at, at the breadth of the schedule here, specifically the non-conference, how important is it for the young guys – to find out what they have in those first three games. Well, and more important, let's start with the season opener. How important is for the young secondary? No doubt about the unproven it. Unproven yeah. secondary yeah. more than maybe young, yeah. but the unproven secondary. How are they going to hold up? You know, Eastern Washington is going to come out throwing. You know, they're going to yeah. look at the NDSU's roster. It's no secret they're going to see all the defections at corner and safety and go, well, how can we yeah. attack NDSU? And how have they attacked most teams anyway in the last decade? They have good quarterbacks and great receivers, and I expect the the unproven the, the transfer guys to, uh, in the secondary, maybe a, a true freshman might get thrown in yeah. there and get tested right away. That's to me where that's where it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah, there may be some big plays given up, Jeff, but I think at the back end you saw where Jackson Dutenefer and Cody Heisman were able to contribute. Mm -hmm. They were thrown in early in the season, especially after Eli Mostart got down, that – I think Matt Entz is open to this, of playing some younger guys early, even though they may give up some chunk plays, to have that versatility and depth down the road. Well, and this is where you find it now. Would a loss to one of those three teams be devastating? Absolutely. Well, it would hurt. Absolutely. I don't think it would be yeah. devastating, but it would ah. hurt. Conference, I mean, you look at the back end, yeah. we can bring the schedule back up. I mean, SDSU, SIU, and Northern Iowa in November, that's about as difficult a stretch as I can remember to end the season. That but you would tough. hope your young guys have grown up by you would then. Hope. And that's yes. what I'm saying, though, that I think you need to play your young guys right away and find out what you have. Yeah. Now, Eastern Washington, again, this Bison defense, when the Bison have been good, when they've been title-winning good, yep. they've been really good on defense. And you look at the stats. I mean, last year was the most points given up since 2009. Last year was the most rushing yards given up since 2010 yeah. per game. So and those are title-winning stats that you can't ignore.
up the middle. You always preach yeah. that to me. Baseball, and that's, and football, that's where right. And that's where they were susceptible last year because the injury to Mostart, I don't think they really found a guy at middle linebacker. They were good on the back end. Weber and Tutsi were good on the back end, but defensive tackle and middle linebacker, and that's still, to me, middle linebacker is still a question mark in yeah. my mind. In, yeah. in and again, we're talking about a, a title-winning yeah. kind of performance. They have good players there. I just don't know. It, uh, is it Jackson is it Hankey Jackson level? Hit good. You know, yep. That's it, the question. Is it Nick DeLuca right. good? Is it uh, you Grant know, Olson good? Carlton yeah. Littlejohn good. LJ you can go good. down yep. the line. Travis yep. Beck good. You need those you need those yep. linebackers to be really really good. I, I'm just really intrigued about this entire season, and it gets going. Uh, in 11 days from now, we'll be there at U.S. Bank Stadium, the home of the Minnesota Vikings against Eastern Washington. Don't forget, we have another Bison preview special that's coming up this Sunday, 1035 on WDAY. We'll continue to look at the team. Matt Entz offers on Cam Miller. We'll actually hear from QB1 as he enters his fourth year as the starting quarterback. Also hear from Eli Mostart back after basically Jeff playing two games last season, how big a deal it is for him to be back. But we mentioned we're back. Going to be here each and every. We'll be on Mondays on Game Week, Wednesdays for our live show on WDAY Extra. Then, of course, Saturdays, people are going to be sick of us. we got our podcast, too. We're going to be I'm gonna get sick of you, too. <laughs> There's no doubt way. about that. There you go, folks, our first Bison video blog for 2023. We'll see everybody next week to get ready for Eastern Washington.